Well, if I was referring to the fact that Mitch admires Danny's poetry and he doesn't understand the girl's plight, whereas Patty seems to identify with it in some way, and they're bickering throughout the play is uh, one of the more amusing aspects of it. Yeah, both the real life Patty and uh, Mitch uh, were minor artists at best. Patty spent I guess the first three years that I knew the real life Mitch, she was his girlfriend, then they broke up somehow, and she was working on a play about the poet Marina Tsvetaeva, the Russian poetess, and uh, uh, whether it ever came off, I don't know, but uh, the sections that she read at these readings were not good. You know, I could even tell 25 years ago that they were not good. Uh, and Mitch, uh, Mitch, like, I guess, I, I mean, I don't know what really happened between the two of them, other than he probably cheated on her, but uh, he was uh, he was someone who uh, also wrote plays, but they were dull, leaden, he had no real talent with words. Both of them, and I don't think I mentioned it in the play, were fans of Ayn Rand and her writing, so you can imagine what their writing must have been like. You seem uh, not obsessive, but interested in looking through your past and finding these assorted characters to act as fodder for your plays. But uh, at least the fictive version of you seems to be saddened by them uh, continually dying off. Uh, another person that shares uh, somewhat of a past with you that goes away. And that's how this play ends. Yeah. And that it's sprinkled through some of the other plays too, where you're finding out that these people that you grew up with or that you share a past with perhaps in Minnesota are continually dying. Well, that's life. And, uh, you know, I think it's it's more interesting. It's more real. We, I've talked before, we've talked about how even the best of the modernists tend to rely on melodramatic devices for plays, i.e. someone has a secret. There's an affair. Uh, there's tension between parent and child, between sibling and sibling, between husband and wife, between uh, uh, this and that. These kinds of Things was, or, or, you know, O'Neill in early in his career, especially, would have these outrageous situations where a guy takes over an island nation and then is running through the jungle uh, and, you know, is regressing backwards through the development of mankind. Uh, and here, Danny is constantly having this inner monologue, it seems, with himself. Uh, he's talking about things, things carry over from one play to another play. Uh, for example, in one of these plays, it might have been this one or another play we talked last time. Danny mentions this old man who he sees at the store he works at now writing in red. And In this next play I'm writing, I'm going to be addressing that because I actually asked the man what he was scribbling on newspapers. So there are these things that, that happen to Danny that I think I'm far more identifiable with than if Danny Wagner somehow uh, uh, was having a, a breakdown because when he was 17, he, he uh, you know, handle some shipment of cocaine and someone got killed, you know, some melodramatic device like that. Here he's thinking about this Mitch Murphy who just died. This brings back naturally the young uh, girl that Mitch Murphy, quote unquote, could arguably have been using, abusing sexually, uh, his own uh, lust for his uh, niece and the vapid niece, you know. Danny only got laid. This is one of those kinds of things where Danny only gets laid by circumstance because he had no idea she was going to be there. And it's only because he, this girl is the alpha, she's an alpha female, and Danny is seen as the alpha male there because he's clearly the best and most influential of the writers. And she has to make him a notch on her belt, and Danny doesn't mind it because she's, you know, gorgeous and whatnot. And so uh, that's, but she has no idea that Danny is a great artist. She just knows that everyone else thinks he's the bee's knees that night. So she has to have him for that night. 